Hello everyone, my name is Garvin, and today we're going to slow down a bit and just take a look at some neglected beings of mythology and folklore. Now, this isn't meant to be an exhaustive video, so we're just going to dip our toes in a little bit. But, with any luck, I'll introduce you to something or someone you've never seen before with some of these creatures. And... You know, also keep in mind, for some of these creatures, there's not much left in the way of lore or stories, but I will be posting sources below. So, uh, with all that said, let's just dive right in, okay? The Ano Centaur is from Greek and Roman myths, but also shows up in medieval bestiaries. Now, I couldn't find any stories or myths that this thing features in, but I still love it, honestly. I mean... Look at this goofy damn thing. Look at it. Pythagoras in the 200 BCs is the first writer to mention this, at least as far as we know, and he's quoted very heavily by later Roman authors. The Ano Centaur is described as having the upper body of a heavily haired man with long muscled arms that were long enough that they could be used for running as well as for grabbing things with the lower body and legs being those of a donkey. And its coloration was gray until you got to the lower flanks where it faded to white, according to the descriptions. Honestly, I think this is something we could have in more fantasy books. Come on, guys. Don't be cowards. Write the Ano Centaur in your book. You know you want to now that you've seen it. Next up, from the British Isle of Man, lurking in Manx folklore, is the Buggin. It's a troll-like shapeshifter. It's described as either a large black calf or horse, with a more human-like form with burning red eyes, a long mane of black hair, tusk, and heavy claws. In some cases, it'll have a humanish face, but with horse ears and hooves instead of feet, or even horns on its head. And there are a number of stories about it. Some claim that it stays in a cave, calling out warnings to fishermen of approaching storms. But it will also just lie to play pranks on people. Uh, there are also stories of other fairies using this creature to punish behavior they don't care for, like baking after sunset. Apparently that offends some fairies. I, I don't know. There's also a story of a buggin who really wanted to pick a fight with the Irish hero Finn McCool, only to be fooled when Finn's wife dresses him up as a baby and sticks him in a crib and starts singing a lullaby. The buggin takes one look at this huge seven feet tall baby and goes, whoever is the daddy of that baby is too big for me to fight. I'm leaving. So, you know, it's not the brightest monster, but... It's still pretty interesting, I think. From Persia, I'd like you to meet the goodest boy in today's video. Well, honestly, the goodest boy in any of my videos. The Chamrosh. I honestly think this creature is just amazing. Now, there are two different descriptions I've found. One is that it's kind of griffin-like with the heads and wings of an eagle, with the body being that of a dog or a wolf. In a wilder version, it has a giant peacock's wings and body with a dog's head and the claws of a lion. Either one works for me. The Persian Chamrosh lives on top of Mount Albors, and to give you an idea of its role in ancient Persian mythology, I'm going to read this text directly. The creator Ormos has produced on the shores of the sea Vorokasha, a tree, and two birds who are immortal and without death. Every year, a thousand new branches spring up from that tree, and all kinds of seeds hang on those branches, and all those seeds become ripe. A bird called Amrosh comes and sits on one of the branches and shakes it, scattering the seeds to the ground. Another bird called Chamrosh comes and strikes the, all the seeds with its wings and sides, and throws them into the sea. All those seeds go inside a cloud full of rain, and that cloud rains on the ground, and all the seeds appear on the earth. And that's where fruit trees come from. It's also considered something of a guardian angel for Iran, in some of the older myths, claiming that 
this thing would fight off devils and carry Iranian heroes to the battlefield. I will say if there is a guardian angel for Iran, I hope it's watching out for the Iranians fighting for their freedom right now. Our next being comes from the southeastern United States and is a spirit, or sometimes a witch, from Cherokee tradition. The Raven Mocker is a witch, or a wizard, or an evil spirit that preys on the sick, the old, or the weak. They are able to turn invisible and fly by taking a fiery shape, and they get their name from their hunting cry, which sounds like a raven diving through the air. When they find someone who is sick, or weak from injury or old age, they will sneak into that person's house and torment and frighten their victim until their ability to resist is broken down. Then the Raven Mocker will use their special skill to remove the heart from their victim's body and eat it. By doing so, the Raven Mocker extends their lifespan by the amount of time that their victim would have lived if they hadn't been murdered by the Raven Mocker. Uh, I should note that when they remove the heart from their victim, they don't leave any marks on the body, so it can look as if the person in question died naturally. Interesting note, Raven Mockers are hated and feared by other evil spirits and dark magic users in Cherokee's uh, myth, and those things would flee an area if they thought a Raven Mocker was taking up residence there. If a Raven Mocker died those same dark magic users or evil spirits would dig up the body and abuse it. So, these guys are unpopular. Lastly, let me talk about a modern mythological beast here. The Ukrainian Bavo Natko. At least, I believe that's a pronunciation, as I couldn't find an official pronunciation guide to any Ukrainians out there listening to this video. I am so sorry if I butchered that. Now, moving on, I believe we're all aware of the struggle the Ukrainian people are waging right now against Russian aggression to keep their independence. As part of that, in the last couple of months, there have been a series of mysterious explosions happening on Russian military bases and supply warehouses, or as the Russian defense ministry calls them, claps, using the Russian word Kolkov. I will apologize to Russian listeners as well if I butchered that because I couldn't find a pronunciation guide for that word either. Apparently, Kolkov also sounds like the Russian word for cotton. Now, Russian news sources blame these explosions on people smoking and not putting out their cigarettes. The response to this was the Ukrainian Defense Ministry posting a picture on Twitter, the same picture I'm using, by the way, claiming this wasn't cigarettes, it was a fluffy ghost creature that is attracted to poorly guarded military targets and loves to play with fire. Now, some would argue this is more of a meme, but my counter to that is memes are a sort of modern mythology, so I'm counting it and using it in this video. Plus, look at that face! It's adorable! I know this is a short video this week, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm linking a special book in the description as well. The book Myths of the Cherokee has it as a public domain publication and one of the sources for my video here. If you'd like to hear more about any of these creatures or beings or just want more creatures in mythology, please leave a comment letting me know. Also, feel free to like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you enjoyed because that aids me powerfully in my battle against the Dreadlord Algorithm. Terror beyond his name. Also, you can join my Patreon. There's a link below for as little as a dollar a month where you can vote on upcoming content. We have two polls active right now for content in January and February, so please feel free to sign up. Speaking of patrons, a special thank you to Big Steve, my biggest supporter. I hope you enjoyed these creatures, man. I'll be back next week to wrap up our year with a book review and a video. Until then, stay safe, keep reading.